All right, hello guys, welcome to this little video. Um, this is just going to be a short tutorial because somebody asked in the comments um, if I could show how you can get from your um, 3D designed model part, whatever it is, um, to a 3D print, how that process works, and it's pretty um, simple. Um, in Katia V5, you have your. It's super easy. You have your model. For me, uh, as an example, it's this uh, mold for a um, um, motor mount from my last video. And um, you can just go to um, File and then Save As. And then I have an ordinal for all my STLs. Um, you just select um, the type STL and then. Um, you save it and um, because the STL is the right um, yeah like a universal um, 3d format um, w which the slicer program uses and the only thing you have to watch out for is um, that your part really has a volume like that you're not for example in the um, yeah, generative shape design or shape design in general that you're not just creating shapes which are hollow in the middle um, but that you always watch out to um, yeah, always create um, things with mass so because um, else I don't know if you would notice it um, if you're going to export it to the slicer but um, at, at last the print won't work so yeah always watch out that you have um, yeah, good parts, always defined parts without any errors. And then you can get to your slicer. Um, for me, it's Ultimate Akira. It's a free free software, um, which um, yeah works pretty pretty good with the Ender three. Um, I before I used the Ender, um, how was it called? En Ender slicer or Creality slicer? Um, but it's basically the same same program but Kira is a little bit um, more updates and everything so you just going to click here load in your um, your parts which one have what did I have yeah this one um, okay <laughs> that's a different part but maybe I, I made a two part um, yeah the mold is made out of two parts, so um, yeah, those are the two parts. And you can just align them on the build plate like you want to. Um, as you can see, it's all the, this um, surface is the build plate of the Ender 3 V2. And um, yeah, then you can adjust all your print settings. Um, for me, I mostly use ABS now because um, PLA doesn't really work that good for car parts because it's really gets really soft um, when exposed to heat or sunlight is enough. Um, <laughs> I had some parts um, fail on me um, in the summer when it was warm and so I used ABS. ABS has been working perfectly um, and can withstand way higher temperatures than PLA. So um, I made a ABS profile um, and yeah I mostly used 0.2 millimeters because the parts I make mostly don't have to be that detailed I, I, that I would go, go down to like 0.12 what the maximum is with standard equipment on the Ender 3 V2 um, so I mostly use 0.2 um, and then bah, 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 the wall line count um, I can slice it for you then I can explain it a little bit better. Um, I figured out that the wall line count is, for me, for my parts, is way more um, like defining how um, sturdy the part is in the end um, because it defines how um, thick the solid wall is um, before the rest is filled with the infill material. Um, so I go like to, to depending on how uh, sturdy the part has to be, I go up to six or that was the maximum that I used. Then the part really gets a little bit heavier and sturdier. And same with top and bottom layers. Um, they're like, you can see if I go up, yeah, yeah then though this um, is how, how many top layers you have, for example, before the rest is filled with infill, they 
you put in several bottom layers and top layers. So um, infill always dependent on um, the application. Um, for this molar mount uh, mold, I could go down uh, nearly to zero because it doesn't have to be that that sturdy. And um, oh, but I wouldn't recommend going to zero. Um, but to a lower number because um, if you're trying to print um, above on a hollow hollow thing um, you will uh, or you will need at least a little bit of infill because um, once you come up here the printer will try to print all, over all of that and if you have absolutely no infill um, it's hard or the print won't be that smooth and that good so always remember to put in a little bit of infill and this 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 yeah i always enable iron or mostly enable ironing um because that makes a pretty smooth and uh, nice surface on the on the top layers and then yeah for my abs prints um, i use have different brands but the settings are quite the same so i use 235 degrees on the printing temperature and 105 degrees on the build plate and i use the standard nozzle and everything from the ender 3 v2 and also the standard glass bed which comes with the v2 i think the normal ender 3 pro um, has another bed but you can yeah, upgrade that or maybe the other one is also better I don't know um, oops yeah um, um, and I also use glue stick on the build plate to ensure build plate adhesion because that's always been my biggest problem that the, the parts didn't um, stick to the, glue, uh, the plate very well so glue stick has been working fine hairspray not so much but glue stick works perfect and I also add this brim around here you can see down here um, eight millimeters of brim so you just get a little bit more of surface area to yeah to ensure better build plate adhesion and then where did we stop the speed I mostly keep the wall speeds between 30 and 45 millimeters per second um, yeah also depending on how fast I need the part to be printed or how much time I have or how detailed the part is for such a part I uh, it works with 40 and 45 like the program also always explains it like here you can read um, uh, having here inner walls um, yeah where does it say inner wall speed um, yeah in a wall faster than the outer wall um, can reduce printing time so I always have like five millimeters per second difference um, and then initial layer if you have a pretty complicated initial layer I would um, recommend um, going down with the initial layer speed so the printer doesn't mess up the first layers because if the first layers work um, and at heat uh, or stick to the glue to the plate um, well then the rest of the print will um, have a high chance of s uh, success and yeah don't mess that much with the retraction um, but you can yeah check my settings um, I think I once googled the retraction distance and speed um, fan speed I turn the cooling off completely when printing with ABS that has been working best for me some also um, only turn it on at the end or uh, I don't know but uh, I turn it off completely has been working perfect and support yeah when you need it um, and build plate adhesion brim and that's basically all the settings so you can then just uh, yeah slice your uh, part and once that's done you can um, save it to to your uh, micro SD card, um, which you can then stick into your printer and start printing. Um, for printing ABS, I built myself myself like a little box. It's just um, some uh, cardboard box um, with like heat insulation stuff in uh, on the inside and a um, like plastic. Um, 
transparent plastic door, um, which I can open and close and yeah, <laughs> get my prints out. Um, because that um, helps with ABS printing because ABS is very, um, yeah, not that easy to print, but um, it's also not that difficult if you just Google a bit and learn all the tips and tricks. And um, yeah, I also want to try ASA because I heard that should have similar characteristics to ABS but should be easier to print. And some people also use PETG for car parts, that should also work, so um, you can try different materials. Um, and yeah, that would be everything I wanted to show you because I also started using Inventor. Um, because here you can't just go to um, Save As, that <laughs> I haven't figured out how that works, but you can go to 3D Print, like here. Um, 3D Print. That opens another. Um, yeah, wait. <laughs> Perfect. Um, then you can go go up here and uh, save as STL file. I mean, you can do other stuff here, but I <laughs> mostly only use it to um, export my STLs. Like, um, yeah, export it and then import it to to the slicer as I showed you uh, before. Um, and yeah, I hope that helps. Um, if you have any other questions or comments, leave that um, in the comment section below. And yeah, it's a new kind of tutorial I'm trying out. I'm, uh, this won't be a tutorial um, channel or anything, but um, I had somebody ask in the comments, so I wanted to do a little video about it. And yeah, hope that helps. And if you've got any other questions, well, I keep repeating myself. Peace out, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.